Knuckles Chaonix was a game released in 1995 for the Sega 32X, an add-on for the Sega Genesis that was an attempt to extend the console's life. The game itself had Knuckles in a starring role, I believe his only one to date. With two exceptions, this game also introduced a bunch of characters that would be mainstays in the franchise. The titular Chaonix. This was years before they would be reimagined into a trio of detectives and leaving Mighty out in the cold until his return in Sonic Mania Plus. Yeah, I know, one's modern, the other's classic, but who cares? But we're not here to talk about the game. Today, we are talking about the 48-page adaption by Archie Comics. Like previous comic retellings of the games, it'll be an adaption in the loosest sense while trying to fit it within the Archie Sonic continuity. If you want to know, this special takes place between issues 30 and 31 of the main book. Without further ado, it's time to see how this story deviates from the game it's adapting. We begin on the Floating Island, a place where its guardian, Knuckles the Echidna, is very strict on not allowing outsiders to trespass on. So naturally, someone has set up a carnival park and invited a lot of people, mostly freedom fighters, to have some fun. Knuckles is not happy this place quickly sprung up on him, which leaves Sonic questioning who is responsible. The park's owner, Renfield T. Roden, introduces himself to the group. He insists that they enjoy themselves and guides them towards the Hall of Mirrors with a special First Ride is Free offer. Yeah, this guy is really trustworthy. The Freedom Fires are having fun with the mirrors until a bright light envelops the room. After it clears up, Everyone except Knuckles are imprisoned in the mirrors. Renfield's boss soon has a word with Knuckles. And shock of all shocks, it's Robotnik. Thanks to his machinations, all of the Freedom Fighters are his prisoners. I guess every other guest got captured too since we have a panel of a deserted park. As Knuckles points out, he's still free. However, he's also been affected by that energy light. Specifically, he's been depowered. You can tell by his shortened locks and his missing hand spikes. Robotnik could have trapped Knuckles with the others, but he wants witnesses for his ultimate triumph. Boy, that's a classic villain blunder right there. Knuckles flees the park and ponders his next move when something zips past him. A bee named Charmy that was too busy gathering pollen to visit the park. Then all of a sudden, a chameleon named Espio appears in front of them. He's been eavesdropping for a bit. Before Knuckles and Charmy can process this, the three hear a loud noise coming towards them. It's Vector the Crocodile, jamming on his tunes. Then right after his appearance, a different loud rumbling occurs. Punching his way out of the mountainside is Mighty the Armadillo, and he's brought company that he'd like the others to meet. Two robots named Heavy and Bomb. The latter only speaks in pings. The robots were originally built by Robotnik to seek out and repair damaged systems automatically. They were also built with power gems to give them independent thought. This backfired on Robotnik as the robots gained free will and a conscience. When they overheard Robotnik's funhouse mirror plan, they decided it was time to bail. They didn't leave empty-handed. Inside the mighty constructed cave, Heavy and Bomb reveal a chest they took from Robotnik, full of power gems. In addition to powering the robots, they were used in the mirror's constructions, as well as other experimental weapons. Now, this newly formed group will use them against Robotnik. Inside the park, Robotnik and Renfield are celebrating their victory when they notice all of the park's rides turning on simultaneously. They figured out it's Knuckles, and he's brought some help. Realizing he should have dealt with Knuckles when he had the chance, Robotnik makes up for it by teleporting in some help from Robotropolis. Metal Sonic, the same one that raced Sonic in issue 25, having since been repaired and upgraded. I know the comic once again refers to him as Mecha Sonic, but for simplicity's sake, I'll refer to him as Metal Sonic. He engages Knuckles' group while en route to the Hall of Mirrors. Each member takes a turn at the machine, showing off their particular skills in the process. Because Knuckles has no powers at the moment, he teams up with Vector to attack Metal Sonic using Sling Rings. I assume they're part of the experimental weapons that require the power gems. They tricked Metal into latching onto Knuckles' end, and Vector forces him straight into Mighty's Punch. For the final touch, Bomb blows up the robot. Not to worry, Bomb can reassemble himself, 
presumably a power gem benefit. Unfortunately for the heroes, Metal Sonic also has a power gem and uses it to grow into a giant red monstrosity. Knuckles uses another power gem to grow giant size and engage Metal Sonic. The fight takes them to the Hall of Mirrors, which they obliterate. As a result, the Freedom Fighters are free and Knuckles gets his powers back. Which means, bye bye Metal Sonic. Although, like I said, Metal Sonic has a power gem of his own. Is it possible he could use it to rebuild himself later on? Nah, couldn't happen. Or could it? The Freedom Fighter mob chases down Robotnik and Renfield. The former makes it to an escape rocket, leaving the other to be trapped like the rat that he is. Courtesy of Espio, Renfield is then hauled away by the police. Two things about that. First, they look like they were on loan from the Muppets. And second, we're still on the floating island. A police force indicates the presence of a city or town, and there's no such place. At least, at this point in time. Wouldn't it make sense for the Freedom Fighters to apprehend the rat? Anyway, Sonic praises Knuckles. Since Penders worked on this story in the next two, I'm not surprised. Sonic goes on to say that Knuckles and his new friends have the makings of their own team. While they deny it, there's no doubt that we haven't seen the last of Knuckles' team, the Chaotix. In fact, we'll see more of them right away. Except for Heavy and Bomb. Like previous specials, there are some backup stories. And this time, they feature the Chaotix. The first story has the Chaotix playing a game of tag, whether they want to or not. At the very least, they do go along with it if declared it. During Espio's turn, he trips and falls in front of an ant in silhouette. He's never seen the ant before, and if the ant wasn't concentrating on something else, Espio would never have seen him. And then the ant just vanishes. Yeah, that's basically it for the story. The second and last story has Knuckles coming to the Chaotix for help because the island is under attack. Mighty believes it's Robotnik's doing, but Knuckles doesn't think so. As he begins to explain his dealings with the mysterious Archimedes, Vector falls into a pit trap. Before they can find something to pull him out, Knuckles, Mighty, and Charmy are bombarded from afar. The blasts knock Charmy for a loop, and he lands in the bushes. They may be down a member, but they soon gain another when Espio appears. Knuckles claims he's been following them since the bombardment. Since when can Knuckles see Espio while invisible? Whatever. Knuckles wants them to leave Charmy behind so they can find out who's attacking the island. Suddenly, a robot appears and attacks Mighty. Knuckles doesn't want to help out with this one, and insists that he and Espio keep going. Mighty and the robot eventually fight each other into a draw. With Knuckles focused on catching the culprit, he fails to notice another robot kidnapping Espio. After Knuckles sees that he's alone, a mysterious voice, presumably from Archimedes, tells Knuckles that he's been focusing on his task rather than helping his friends. And the story and special end with the voice asking Knuckles, which is more important, the floating island or the Chaotix? The purpose of the two backup stories is to advance the ongoing Archimedes subplot, which began in the Sonic & Knuckles special and continued in the Sonic Triple Trouble special. Hmm, both of them game adaptions. Coincidence? You decide. And I mean it when I say both backup stories here further things along because, in the first one, to give something away now, the ant Espio encounters is actually Archimedes. It is not a coincidence that he just happens to be around while the Chaotix are playing tag. He's gathering intel on them so he can make his move in the next story. All to teach Knuckles a lesson on duty versus friendship. So far, Knuckles is all about duty to the island. Up until this special, he's never had friends to help out with his problems. Rivals, sure, but not friends. And that's why I don't mind him being a jerk as he leaves the Chaotix behind one by one. Also, unlike the first story which I'll get to shortly, Knuckles has his abilities. But as Archimedes demonstrates, that alone may not be enough. I will give the two stories together a 5. The art's a bit meh on both, and the stories, the first one especially, are about as average at best. I will give them props for continuing the Archimedes subplot, and hopefully Knuckles can learn the value of teamwork. There will be payoff for this story arc, but that's something for another day. Now for the main story. I'm surprised with how many game-accurate things were included. 
The setting mostly takes place in an amusement park, but instead of Carnival Island like in the games, here it's Happy Land Amusement Park. I know these days Carnival Island goes by the real name of Neutrogic High Zone, but for reasons I'll get to in a moment, I will continue to reference this place as Carnival Island. All playable characters are present, even the ones considered to be a hindrance, though I wonder why they changed Heavy and Bomb's design between the games and the comics. They used the sling ring tether mechanic, one of if not the primary game element, during the fight with Metal Sonic. Metal Sonic himself is the final boss to Chaotix phase, and does indeed grow into a giant red mechanical monstrosity called Metal Sonic Kai. And finally, Knuckles growing large himself may be a nod to the game's growth power-up. The power gems are an interesting MacGuffin that don't show up much after this special. You'd think both sides would use them to their advantage. I also think they're more than likely a substitute for the Chaos Rings, the game's actual power MacGuffins. Maybe because of the comic's power rings or something? I don't know. Having the setting be on the floating island. Well, we need an excuse for Knuckles to get involved since he is the star, but given his actions in the past, he would not have allowed this park to be constructed on the island. Maybe the park could have been placed in a separate location, and Knuckles would have gotten involved due to, say, Metal Sonic stealing the Chaos Emerald from the floating island, and the island happens to crash into the water nearby. He arrives at the park, which is powered by the Emerald, at the same time as the Freedom Fighters, and things could play out the same. That's how I would rewrite things to make it a little better. It would explain why there would be police around at the end. I could be wrong, but I think the reason they put the park on the floating island is because the writers read the story synopsis for the game. The western one, I might add. Allow me to read it to you. The plot starts out the day before the opening of Carnival Island, a huge amusement resort with the latest in high-tech rides and games. As the guardian of the island, Knuckles' job was to make sure nothing went wrong before the grand event. Behind the scenes, however, Dr. Robotnik was cooking up a new dastardly scheme. To fuel his latest diabolical device, Robotnik went to Carnival Island to find the Power Emerald that supplied electricity to the entire island a tool which would fit into his plan perfectly. To further ensure that Knuckles and his friends would not interfere with his plans, Robotnik used his combi catcher to freeze Mighty the Armadillo, Espio the Chameleon, Vector the Crocodile, and Charmy B in time. When Knuckles returned from patrolling the far end of the island, he found Robotnik as he was imprisoning Espio the Chameleon in a combi catcher scaring the villain off and rescuing Espio. After that, Knuckles discovered that he could rescue his other friends one at a time using Ring Power, a power that holds two partners together like a magical rubber band. Never held back for long, Knuckles set out with his team to save Carnival Island from Robotnik before the grand opening. So it seems for this game, again going by the Western summary, Knuckles was tasked into guarding Carnival Island instead of the Floating Island, aka Angel Island, in many of the other games he's appeared in. I can see why they combined the two locations. And I just realized something. The Power Gems I mentioned earlier? They might actually be a shout out to the Power Emerald I just mentioned in the Western synopsis. For the plot itself, it's straightforward, albeit rushed in certain places. Namely, the part where all the Chaotix just happen to appear in rapid succession. It's like, quick, introduce this character, then this character, and so forth. Yeah, before this story, they were all practically strangers to one another. And look how quickly they agreed to help Knuckles with this situation. Yes, I know it's a comic for a younger audience, and we need to get a move on. What I'm saying is, it might have been better to have them pop in as small cameos in other Knuckles side stories, before having them join forces to fight a big threat. I know it's similar to something like, say, the Avengers, but shared universes are a thing in comic book settings. To be fair, we did see Vector in one of the Triple Trouble backup stories, which is set prior to this one. So, partial credit for trying. I wish they could have done more with the others, even if it was just in the background. I should point out that Espio just watching Knuckles while invisible does pay off way down the line. We'll save it for the relevant moment. The story, heck, you can argue the entire special itself, has the feeling of a backdoor pilot. For those unaware, a backdoor pilot is a film, miniseries, or episodes of an existing series that set up a proof of concept that could spin off into a future series. 
Often, especially in the existing series example, regulars would have reduced roles in favor of the guest stars that intend to sell this new series to the audience. Archie Sonic is no stranger to this idea. I mean, without the original miniseries, the ongoing series would not have happened. I feel the concept really applies here as the story has the not whole freedom fighters out of commission for most of it, and has Knuckles reduced to a powerless state. Which is why he had to team up with the new characters, who each have a special skill set, to help save the day. The Chaonix, minus Heavy and Bomb, would go on to serve as Knuckles' freedom fighter team in his stories. Heavy and Bomb would appear in another team down the line, but once more, it's something for another time. The story gets a 7, thanks to a surprise amount of game references and decent looking art. The dialogue's a bit dated, especially with all the pop culture references sprinkled here and there. I mean, look at this. Yeesh. And the story itself is simplistic and straightforward. Hey, I'd rather have a simple story rather than playing levels multiple times to finish them, while at the same time being picked at random. That's one of the weaknesses of the game in my opinion. Repetitiveness combined with randomness. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this game adaption, and I'll see you next time. Knuckles and Vector using the sling ring tech has to be a shout out to the game's box art right here. It cannot be a coincidence. Or could it?